What is Capitalism? A Simple Explanation, Part 1. Capitalism is an economic system that is based on private ownership of the means of production and on individual economic freedom. That is to say, a country's trade, industry, and profits are controlled by private companies instead of by the people whose time and labor powers those companies. The United States and many other nations around the world are capitalist countries. But capitalism is not the only economic system available. Throughout history, other countries have embraced other systems, like socialism or communism. Check out our future videos on simple explanations of socialism and communism and the differences between the three. In most capitalist countries, the means of production are a combination of privately owned factories and businesses, private-public hybrid ownership, and some government-owned entities. These owners make decisions about what and when to produce deliverables and how much these products should cost. A defining characteristic of capitalism is the idea of free competition. With free competition, the idea is that individuals can compete freely without interference from government or other outside forces. This is not completely true because governments do regulate the parameters of some industries. For example, in the 1990s, the government instituted an antitrust lawsuit against Microsoft for what it alleged was an attempt to promote competition. Microsoft supporters alleged that forcing Microsoft to allow companies to bundle arch-rival Netscape's web browser with Microsoft Windows was akin to requiring that Coca-Cola include a can of Pepsi in each six-pack it sells. Generally, though, Capitalist entities assume that the most deserving businesses or individual will benefit most. Who to identify or how to quantify deserving is a matter of interpretation. In theory, all of this will mean fierce competition between manufacturers, which will result in lower prices for consumers because those consumers will be able to take advantage of competition. Another defining characteristic of capitalism is supply and demand. In capitalist systems, Prices for goods and services are determined by how many products there are and how many people want them. The theory is that when supply increases, prices will drop. If prices drop, demand is supposed to increase until supplies run out. Prices will then rise again, but only as long as demand is high. These laws of supply and demand are supposed to work in a cycle to control prices and keep them from getting too high or too low. Capitalism, a brief history. During the Middle Ages, feudalism was the law of the land. It was a hierarchical system that was oppressive and tended to keep people poor and bonded to their master's lands, which poor people farmed in exchange for a place to live and military protection from their enemies. With the death of feudalism, rural British peasants were left homeless and unemployed, and this eventually funneled them away from the countryside and into urban centers. These farmers turned peasants were forced to sell their labor in a newly competitive work environment in order to survive, while the state worked in concert with newly wealthy merchants, capitalists, to establish a maximum wage and to clamp down on beggars. It was during this challenging time that Europe's economic systems began to collapse. A new class of merchants began to trade with foreign countries, and this led to a new demand for exports that helped wealthier merchants but hurt local economies. This new trade dictated overall production and the pricing of goods. By the 18th century, Britain had become an industrial nation, and the dawn of the Industrial Revolution ushered in an explosion of manufacturing. In these factories and mills, the modern seeds of capitalism as an idea germinated as well as the opposition to it. The Scottish economist Adam Smith published his influential book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations, in 1776. This treatise is considered the bedrock upon which modern capitalism rests. Although some of his ideas about value and labor differ from those of modern economists, Adam Smith is often called the father of capitalism. Stay tuned for a future lecture analyzing Adam Smith and the influence of his book, An Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations. Capitalism, the Good
Like any economic system, capitalism has its good points and downsides. Its supporters defend it in two ways. They emphasize that economic freedom leads to political freedom and that having state-owned means of production could lead to federal overreach and authoritarianism. They point out that capitalism is the only way to organize a society and insist that alternative economic systems like socialism, communism, or anarchism are doomed to fail. Of central importance to capitalism's supporters is the notion that the individual rather than the collective is the heart of the pull-yourself-up-by-the-bootstraps narrative and that this mentality instills a sense of pride, hard work, and determination in one's accomplishments which cannot be replicated by any other economic system. Most importantly, they argue that incentive is a key ingredient that capitalism lends to economic profitability and viability. They argue that competition between capitalist organizations benefits consumers by making products and services more affordable, and that capitalism's intensely competitive environment, dog-eat-dog -dog world, encourages people to work harder to achieve their dreams. They dismiss critics who are concerned by inequality and oppression by arguing that the wealthy are wealthy because they are more productive than those who are less wealthy. They also dismiss the critique that capitalism has a negative impact on the environment and causes shrinking resources. They counter-argue that even if the resources are diminishing, which they view as debatable, those resources will only become more valuable and able to generate more capital as those resources continue to diminish. Problems with Capitalism There are many critics of capitalism. This is particularly true in the 21st century after the collapse of the housing bubble in the United States and the worldwide recession of 2007. To understand the criticism and negatives of capitalism, one must first understand what it means to be a capitalist. Capitalists are typically wealthy individuals, corporations, or even countries who have large amounts of money or other financial resources. These assets are invested in businesses, and the capitalists benefit from the system of capitalism by making increased profits and, as a result, adding to their wealth. Capitalist countries are dominated by what is called the free market, an economic system where both prices and production are dictated by corporations and private companies who are in competition with one another and who intently focus on private property, economic growth, freedom of choice, and most importantly, limited government intervention. On the political spectrum, conservatives tend to be pro-capitalist and liberals tend to be more anti-capitalists, although this is far from the rule. The impact that capitalism has on the lives of ordinary people depends on whether they are workers or managers. Individuals who own companies and employ other workers often are in favor of capitalism. It makes sense to them because the more profits their company makes, the more resources they will have to share with their workers. President Ronald Reagan's trickle-down economics is a key exemplar of this type of thinking. Theoretically, this is supposed to improve everyone's standard of living. Supporters of capitalism argue that the success of the system is all based on the principle of supply and demand, and that with capitalism, consumption is paramount. The problem, however, is that many capitalist organizations or individuals don't share their wealth. This is one of the major criticisms of capitalism because it drives economic and social inequality. Proponents of capitalism take the opinion that greed is good, that it is a positive thing because it drives profits, and profits drive innovation and product development, and this means there are more choices available to those who can afford them. However, opponents argue that capitalism is exploitative and leads to a brutally divided society where the rights of working classes are trampled on in favor of more profits for the wealthy. There have been numerous protests and demonstrations regarding economic inequality during times of economic insecurity. A recent example is the Occupy Wall Street movement, which began as an anti-capitalist protest against the so-called 1%, the richest of the rich of the capitalist class. The central question of the Occupy Wall Street movement was, why are the capitalist class allowed to become so much wealthier while the vast majority of individuals live under economically precarious conditions or even abject poverty? 
the central complaints resolve around the abject unfairness of the capitalist system. People oppose capitalism because they view capitalism as inhumane, undemocratic, unsustainable, and deeply exploitative. Indeed, many argue that it should be dismantled. For them, capitalism is inherently at odds with democracy because it allows elites to hold power over the masses of ordinary workers in an uneven power structure, where the more capital the wealthy accrue, the more power they possess. Karl Marx, the most famous opponent of capitalism, wrote in Volume 1 of his book Capital, A Critical Analysis of Capitalist Production, Just as man is governed in religion by the products of his own brain, so in capitalist production he is governed by the products of his own hand. Essentially, the argument against capitalism is that its hallmark is poverty in the midst of plenty. Opponents argue that immense suffering and violence have been forced upon the working and laboring classes by elites who emphasize a ruthless system of profits over people and the proliferation of wage slavery where individuals have no choice but to sell their labor. This intense condition, they argue, leads inevitably to dehumanization and social alienation. In this regard, Karl Marx wrote that the capitalist method of production mutilate the laborer into a fragment of a man, degrade him to the level of an appendage of a machine, destroy every remnant of charm in his work, and turn it into a hated toil. Opponents also worry that technological advances like automation, artificial intelligence, and the erosion of public health care pressures the working class even more, and they worry that capitalists' thirst for profit over all else means that those who sell their labor will be victimized further. Conclusion What is the difference between capitalism and socialism? Since the global recession at the beginning of the 21st century, capitalism has been criticized much more heavily than in the past. This is especially true of young people. Numerous surveys have been conducted on the desirability of capitalism versus a type of democratic socialism. We will go into this more in future lectures when we look at the nature of socialism and or democratic socialism. In an April 2016 survey, the Washington Post found that a majority of young adults ages 18 to 29 rejected capitalism outright. CNN also reported that individuals between the ages of 21 and 32 think capitalism will cease to exist by the time they are elderly. The magazine Salon found that many of the young people they surveyed expected to see a great societal shift in their lifetime, either toward socialism, a political and economic system where the means of production are collectively and equally owned by everyone, or toward a more dystopian future where dwindling resources are owned primarily by the wealthy. In this situation, the young people surveyed believed that ordinary people would need to form collective autonomous assemblages in order to survive. Interestingly, the idea of a democratic socialism promoted by Senator Bernie Sanders during his 2016 run for the presidency was juxtaposed to the ultra-capitalist, anti-socialist Trump administration. Capitalism and socialism are thought of as polar opposites and are usually framed that way for political gain. But there are many forms of socialism, and many capitalist countries employ a form of socialist governing. For example, nations like Norway, Sweden, the United Kingdom, Canada, and the Netherlands incorporate socialist ideas into their societies, and so does the United States. For example, universal health care and social security are both socialist concepts. At its root, socialism is an economic system where a whole community, not just the elites or corporate entities, control a great deal of the means of production. In socialism, there is the assumption that individuals are naturally cooperative, not competitive. The goal is an egalitarian society that is run democratically by elective representatives for the benefit of all in accordance with a set of collectively determined parameters. Unlike with capitalism, with socialism, industry and production are run by the state and the acquisition of private property is seen as counterproductive. 
Critics of socialism argue that socialist systems slow economic growth, reward worker nonproductivity or laziness, and stifle individual rights and free expression. In a capitalist system, profits are the focus over everything else. In a socialist system, the public is regarded as more important and social welfare is the major priority. Examples of capitalist countries with some socialist organizing are the United States, the United Kingdom, and Germany. Contrastingly, modern socialist countries with some capitalist organizing are China, India, Cuba, and the Soviet Union. This has been University Quick Course. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.